morning. Hey, happy birthday. Today is Pentecost, Pente, 55, 50 days after Easter, first Easter. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes down on the crowd gathered in Jerusalem, and Peter stands up and he preaches the first sermon, the first Christian sermon ever. It's considered the birthday of the church, so here we are. That's our text for today, that J.J. did an excellent job reading today. i got to say, you, this is a long one. You had words like Phrygia and Macedonians. That was good. It was, seriously, it was good. Good job. Um, so that's our text for today. The text is uh, the very first sermon that Peter gives. So my question is, well, what's so amazing about sermons? Some of you are saying nothing. <laughs> no offense. All right. Well, well, let's look at Peter's sermon today because the text is actually just a small part of his long sermon. We just get a little peek, a tiny little bit of his sermon. But it's a part of the sermon that Lutherans really make a big deal of. I mean, we really love it because Peter preaches law and Peter preaches gospel. People hear it, they repent and are saved. The perfect Lutheran sermon. Boom. When Peter preaches the law, it is harsh, and it is cutting like a knife. You killed Jesus. The gospel is unexpected and amazing. God raised him from the dead. And the result is simply life. People repent and are saved. So I want to preach to you today about Peter's preaching, but I've got a problem I need you to help me with. You may not know this about pastors, but it is really difficult for us to sit and listen to a sermon. To just, just sit and listen. I mean, we work so hard. We train so long in the art and the craft of what we call homiletics. This is a big word to make it sound more harder than it is. And, and, and so just to sit, we can't not critique and analyze and, and everything that's going on a, during the message. As a matter of fact, I don't think Pastor Jeremy has listened to a sermon in two years. At least every time I look at him, he looks like he's analyzing me. I even found a picture of a sermon last Pentecost. <laughs> if you zoom in on the face there, you can tell he's not really into it. Or, or maybe he's confused. Maybe he's just confused. I don't know. But I don't, wanna, I don't want to preach to you today about Peter's preaching. I want to talk to you as a child, a child of God. You see, I remember when I was a child, uh, going down the street in some downtown, there was a man that had a table set up on the sidewalk. And he had all of these different kinds of glasses on the table, and they all had different amounts of water in it. And he would put his finger in the water, and he would touch the glass, and it would make this, this beautiful note. Now, I was a kid, and I I couldn't figure out what was going on. His hands were going here and there and everywhere. He's touching this one and this one and this one. And it was just all confusion to my mind. But when I listened, I saw it. He was taking that sound and that sound and that sound. He was combining it to make this beautiful song. When I was a kid, though, and I noticed on the very corner of the table, there was the, a, a very small glass, and it looked like it was out of reach, and it looked like it was completely empty. And I wondered, can this man make even that glass sing? He got to the end of the song, and he dipped his finger in water, and he reached and he touched that glass on the corner of the table. And it let out the highest and most beautiful note in the song. I just remember standing there in awe, standing in wonder, taking it all in. Well, this is how I need you to approach our text for today. Like a child, in wonder of what God is doing. The verse we're going to look at, it's only half of a verse. Acts 2, 14a Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice. That's the wonder. That's the wonder that I want you to see today. 
Now, maybe you're thinking, what's so special about that? I mean, Peter, really, of all the disciples, we're used to Peter opening up his mouth, somehow putting his foot in it, right? Do you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is having a holy conversation with Moses and Elijah? James and John are silent in awe, but not Peter. Peter butts in. He actually cuts off Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. He says, hey, Lord, uh, I, I know you're talking to Moses and Elijah, but I just have to say something. It is good. <laughs> it is really good that we're here today. <laughs> and, and I want to make some tents, one for you and one for you and one for you. And Luke, is, he's writing this down for us. He's telling us the story. And he says, in his own words, Peter didn't know what he was saying. <laughs> He was out of his mind, basically. High on the mountain, Peter, not at a loss for words. Out on the sea, Peter was not at a loss for words. Do you remember? Deep in the night, the storm raging, the, all the disciples in the boat being tossed and forth, and suddenly they see a ghost walking towards them on the water. And this ghost says that it's Jesus. Now, the 11 disciples are silent in wonder, but not Peter. Peter musters a word of courage. Lord, if it is you, I don't think it is, I don't think it is. If it is you, bid me come out to you on the water. Up on the mountain, out at sea, never at a loss for words. Even on the night when Jesus was betrayed. All the disciples gathered in somber silence. But not Peter. Peter speaks up. Oh, Lord, if all of these losers fall away from you, I won't. Not me. I will follow you to prison. I will follow you to death. And that night, Peter lost Jesus. In the courtyard, three times people came up to me, to, to Peter and said, weren't you with him? And three times he said, no. Peter used his words to empty himself of every last drop of Jesus. He was a shell of a disciple. He was an empty glass, if I've ever seen one. That is what is so amazing about Acts 2 14a. Peter stood up and lifted up his voice. You see, it's not about the glass. And it's not about how full or how empty you are. It's only about the one who touches the glass and makes it sing. Now, the people were so confused about what was going on. This Jesus who had been crucified, died, and buried, God had risen from the dead, had ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, ruling and reigning as Lord and Christ over all. And now on Pentecost, he is sending his spirit, and he is touching glasses everywhere. He is touching Old Testament prophets and making them speak in ways we've never heard before. He is touching fishermen and letting them speak in languages that they'd never learned. And he's touching the, all of the people from all around the world. And they are hearing a new message in their old familiar tongue. And the people are confused. They can't figure out what God is doing here. And the Holy Spirit touches Peter, and he stands up, and he explains through the, the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel that he quotes to them. God can, by his Spirit, make any empty vessel sing. Now, I think I know how you feel right now. I think you feel a little frustrated. And I told you, the preaching today is about Peter preaching, but I'm not letting you hear him speak. I'm not quoting a single word from his entire sermon. 
It's like I'm asking you to stand out on the patio with the doors closed and just look through the window. But I'm doing that for a reason. It's because I want you to see something. I want you to see a completely different sermon. Just the fact that Peter is preaching. That itself is a sermon on its own. And whenever you feel like you need to speak for God, you need to come here and you need to listen to that sermon. If you stand up as a godparent for a nephew, a niece, or a friend, if you're in the youth group or graduates here today, if you are graduating high school and you go to college and your roommates are talking about doing something that is not moral and all of your friends are silent, but you dare to open your mouth. If you graduate college and you're going into the workforce and you're sitting around with all the new hires and they're talking about doing something that's not ethical and everyone else is silent, but you dare to open your mouth. Or if any of you go and visit a friend who's been, maybe had surgery a few days just to see how they're doing, offer a word of encouragement. Or you call up a, a, a woman who's lost her husband weeks ago just to, again, see how she's doing. You need to come to this place and you need to listen to this sermon. That God, through his spirit, can make any empty glass sing. And you may ask, how can I preach when I'm an empty glass. How do you, let's say you're divorced, how do you speak to your children about marriage? Or me, I'm, I am so blessed, I'm so happy, all of my children are, are happy and healthy and alive. How do I go and talk to someone who has just lost a child? What will I say? Or maybe you're a procrastinator, but you need to talk to a coworker about reliability. Or maybe you spin, spin, shop, shop, shop. But you need to talk to your sister about financial responsibility. Whatever it is, however empty we are, if you can't think of anything to say, God has not left us alone. Let someone else preach for you. What do you mean? I mean, God has not left us alone. He has surrounded us by a cloud of witnesses. If you don't know what to say, take a verse from a favorite song. Take a, 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 a memory of a Bible story you, you learned as a child or a quote from Martin Luther or something you memorized in catechism. Take those voices and let them speak for you. Jesus and Jesus for you, for them. Jesus can make any empty vessel sing. That's the wonder of Pentecost. That's what's so wonderful about sermons, whether it's me or you preaching. Any empty vessel. So what's so amazing about sermons? Well, we talked about already, we're all called to preach. What's so amazing about sermons is that God works through us no matter how bad we've been, no matter how lost we feel because of depression or abuse or torn relationships or job loss or anything else in all creation. God, through his spirit, can touch any empty vessel and make it sing. Here's what's so amazing about sermons is that that miracle of Pentecost continues each and every day in each and every person. Whether it's me or it's you sharing the love of Jesus with our family and friends, that is God himself speaking and ministering to the people in our lives. Isn't that exciting? What a tremendous opportunity. No matter how empty we are, God uses us huh, to share his love, to proclaim his gospel to the world. Amen? Yeah, amen. Let me pray with you. We'll prepare for our communion service. 
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, uh, the Comforter, the one who is our guide, our helper through each and every day of our lives. Help us to be attuned to his voice, to be receptive of his leading and his nudges, uh, to share your words of peace, your words of encouragement, your words of joy to our family and our friends. Lord, that's why you have brought them into our lives, uh, so that we can share a little bit of Jesus with them each day. Give us the courage to do that. Give us the wisdom uh, to do that. And let your Holy Spirit work in and through us uh, in everything that we do and everything that we say. Uh, Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.